I want you to start thinking about this concept. Do I want fluctuating income, income where I have to constantly reevaluate, especially as I'm getting older and my mental capacity to keep up with this is declining? Do I want to try to do mental calculations for the rest of my life? Or do I want to put in place a solution where I'm guaranteed never to run out of income before I run out of life? Hey folks, Colin Richards here. I'm president and founder of Lord & Richards. And once again, I'm thrilled to be visiting with you about key topics of interest to clients who want to retire. These are the top questions that retirees are asking or pre-retirees. And one of them is, do I have enough to retire? Well, that starts with a variety of answers. It's not one simple answer. And one of the issues that we want to start with is age. We talked about that in a previous segment. Are you planning on trying to retire a little early? Maybe your 50s or early 60s presents some problems that we need to address, like how to access your money before 59 and a half without penalties, how to pay for health care until 65, how to deal with the Social Security gap until you hit 62, and what if you have a pension that won't kick on until your mid-60s? And then we answered in our last segment this question, do I have enough to retire when I factor in Social Security? One of the biggest sources of income for retirees here in America, we've got to know what are the rules surrounding being single versus married? Different, different approach. We need to know what are the rules about being widowed versus being single, right? And divorced. We need to understand how retirement benefits are affected by waiting to take those benefits. They, they grow, but is that what you really need in your plan? And then if you're married, we got to understand how might I be able to maximize my retirement from Social Security by taking spousal benefits, a huge deal. So over 267 different ways that we can address this topic. I just hit about four of them, okay? Real quick highlight. Now, here's another question that I got asked. Okay, Colin, uh, we've talked about Social Security, we talked about my age, the healthcare gap, all of that, but now I've got to make up a big gap between what Social Security pays or my pension and my actual lifestyle right? Because we're going to help you sit down at Lord & Richards and develop a realistic budget, right? This isn't going to be one of those off-the-cuff budgets. The problem with most things that I see people bring in to me from other advisors is they've got these wild estimates, right, that hold no water. And then we get into retirement, we find out, whoa, I way underestimated. I gave one example in a previous segment. Most people vastly underestimate their health care costs. Typically today, once you hit 65 and take Medicare, you're going to need a thousand bucks for a household of two every month. And that cost is just increasing. Just a thousand. That's going to take a bite. Then we have all kinds of things that we need to consider, such as our taxes and insurance on our properties if they're paid off, our mortgage if they're not, other types of healthcare expenses. And then there's some really huge ones we're going to talk about in another uh, episode about issues like what if somebody gets really sick, chronically ill. But let's just start at the foundation, okay? Do I have enough savings just to retire and to cover my budget? Years ago, a man by the name of William Bengen came up with a rule. He called it the rule of 4%. Not very imaginative. I might have called it the whiz-bang retirement rule or something like that, but rule of 4%. And what he simply did is he kind of looked back at his client history and said, well, based on what markets have done up till then in the 90s, I think if, if you take 4% out of your portfolio every year, adjust it for inflation, you should never run out of money. That was a good thumbnail. It wasn't as scientific as the studies we now have today. Guess what happened in 2008? We discovered, and it was across the board, everybody discovered, whoa, if I'm taking 4% and the markets take away 50% from my portfolio because I'm being invested like most advisors invest people in these 60-40 portfolios and both stocks and bonds go down like they did in 2008 and again in 2022, holy cow, if I lose half my portfolio, my 4% withdrawal, if I keep it the same, is now an 8% withdrawal. Holy cow, that's going to run out fast. So all these studies started coming out. Men like Wade Fow of the American College, men like Moshe Malevsky from Canada, experts in pensions, retirement, never running out of money said, hey folks, 
you've been shooting way too high. If you're going to put your money in the market, you better get that withdrawal rate down to 2 to 3% if you want to have a high likelihood of never running out of money before running out of life. And by the way, that is the game, right? Income is not the only consideration, but it's the first consideration in trying to retire. Well, if market risk has built up in your savings and you take a whack, then it's going to throw the whole plan out of whack if you're using the old worn out 4% rule. I want you to take that and discard that. First of all, for some of you, 4% is too much. And for others of you, 4% is too little. You say, no, Colin, you're speaking in riddles. For those of you who are taking your income, the income that you need to cover your budget in retirement or planning on it, who are invested in at-risk investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and so forth, the traditional stuff, you need to put that rate down lower, 25 to 3%. Otherwise, you do still have 30 to 40% risk of running out if you live a typical life expectancy because of the new realities of the extreme volatility across all the asset classes. Now, some of you can actually figure out how to take a higher withdrawal rate. Now, I've seen people do this fallaciously. They got it wrong because they said, well, I'm just going to earn 7% in my portfolio and I'll take 7% out. Boom, boom. I'm good. Well, the problem is you're not even remotely factoring in the impact of inflation. And as we've just seen in recent years, that will destroy your plan. You will run out of money. Okay, so don't do that. Don't just say, well, I'm going to guess at an interest rate or a rate of return that I'm going to get off my portfolio and take that amount. At the very least, allow yourself room to continue to save so that next year's withdrawal can be a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Then take your average rate of return and reduce it in your calculations. You're not going to average 7, A, without help, or B, without excessive risk, right? The mighty S&P, if I look over a typical retirement period of about 30 years, you're going to find that the S&P could lose as much as 55%. People who experience that are going to be financially devastated if they don't change their plans, okay? So even the mighty S&P, if I just set it and forget it, is going to do me dirty. And over that time period, by the way, the S&P will range from 7 to 9%. Okay? But it's when it happens that's going to change your plan. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to start thinking about this concept. Do I want fluctuating income, income where I have to constantly reevaluate, especially as I'm getting older and my mental capacity to keep up with this is declining and my access maybe to people in my life like a husband, a spouse, is removed? Do I want to try to do mental calculations for the rest of my life? Or do I want to put in place a solution where I'm guaranteed never to run out of income before I run out of life? See, that's what we do at Lord & Richards. When it comes to income, you need to take all the conjecture out of the way and you need to put in safe, consistent income off of sources that are not subject to market fluctuations. I'll tell you how. It just takes a simple phone call. I can't wait to chat with you.